Welcome back. This is Exposing 21st Century Satanism here on YouTube. And one thing I just realized, like, after, like, just thinking about, um, like, believing in God and, and becoming a Christian and following after the Bible's commandments and really, you know, paying attention to the, um, what the Bible says and stuff like that and just comparing our world that we live in right now to the world that Jesus Christ lived in when he existed. I just really had like a, just a vision in my brain or in my mind, you know, just something just spoke to me right now. And I just realized that being a Christian or believing in God is not any easier today than it was back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I mean like back when Christ was alive, like, and I just started thinking about this because I was thinking to myself, I was like, why does it feel like believing in God is such a difficult task? And then I thought to myself, well, it's probably a difficult task because nowadays people look at creation and they look at the thought of God and all powerful, mighty God. And especially the fact that they look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a fallacy and they look at it like this is make believe or this is this is no true this is no more true than disney you know like because it's like they blurred the lines like and then it's like i don't blame someone for saying you know i'm skeptical about god like you know the only reason people are skeptical about god is because it's been it's been constantly brought up throughout history you know just well recent history not like the history like of like when Jesus was alive, but the history of relatively short around these last 100 years, like there's been so much misconceptions and so much like different beliefs and especially with the the um, evolution coming into the picture. It's just like, you know, you have to like really understand like, so if God is truly real and I do believe Jesus Christ is real, and that be, be, being a Christian is more difficult than you can even imagine because I was reading this thing online and it said that some of the disciples, they faced the most excruciating deaths. Like they were killed, not just killed by like being like beaten to death. Like, I mean, that would be excruciating as well, but they were not only just beat to death, but they were tortured and they were like literally hung some one of them was even flayed like their flesh was like peeled off of their body and 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 one of them their, their body was even one of them was like stoned and then attached to like a um attached to like like a chariot or some sort and was dragged through the city like to show like these people who are saying that christ is risen look at the kinds of death that they they look at the kind of death that they had to endure that the that the fact that they were willing to die these excruciating deaths like like for for something like there was this thing and like i can't remember what it was like the water gate or something when this guy said you know i really became a believer in christ because he said there was 12 people and those 12 people were saying that you know the thing was that there was 12 people and for two weeks they couldn't even keep a lie by the end of two weeks, they were like, look, I can't even lie no more. Like, literally, I can't lie. Like, we did something that was corrupt. We lied. And we were trying to cover it up. But the people in Watergate, those 12 people, they couldn't even cover that up for even two weeks. But there was 12 disciples. But they were willing to die for what they believed in. That wasn't no two weeks. That was 40 years. 40 years of preaching the gospel that Jesus Christ was resurrected. And then in the end, they died excruciating deaths. They didn't just say, you know what? This is made up. I don't believe this stuff. No, they literally were destroyed. Like they were found and they were destroyed. John, I think John was beheaded. Like John was imprisoned and then be, or, or was, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I got that right. I'm trying to figure out which disciple was beheaded because one of the disciples literally was was beheaded for their faith and it's really and it's really makes you have to wonder like literally like 
what kind of person would die an excruciating death that would just literally die these most painful excruciating deaths for something that was not true like you have to think to yourself like in today's age like if you got into like some if you were in a position of power like and you were in like some kind of governmental position of power and you were caught doing something that was unethical and they said you know what like it's either you admit your wrongs and you do the time or something or you die an excruciating death for for all the lies you've told or, or something like that so so in a sense like that might not be the perfect example but like these disciples were saying like you know what we're not gonna admit that this is made up like this is not made up like they were like saying to whoever was were per persecuting them at the time that they were saying we're not going to say that this is made up like literally this is still the truth and we are willing to die for this not just die like a a normal death of old age or like die from like being poisoned or I don't know but no but literally die excruciating deaths like be like like the kind of okay here I I pulled up I pulled up a article and this might actually help describe just how excruciating these deaths were and that's why i thought to myself and you have to understand where i'm trying to draw a connection is because i was thinking to myself why is it so hard to believe in god and then i thought to myself look something just told me like i had a vision in my mind i was thinking why is it so hard to believe in god but look at the disciples the 12 of them that truly were um, disciples of Jesus Christ like they didn't just end up just dying of old age like they didn't just go and preach the gospel and then eventually like they hit like a hundred or hit like somewhere in their 90s and just like passed away in their sleep no these people were freaking murdered these people were killed these people were murdered in cold blood and killed and and were and, and, and so here's the person that uh bar Bartha, I gotta learn how to pronounce that. Bartha, Bar, okay, so B A R T H O L O M E W. So this 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 disciple, this disciple, I'm gonna learn how to pronounce it real quick. Can't accept anything less. But this disciple right here, this person, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Okay, so this guy Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Yeah, I get it. Bartholomew. He was skinned alive and beheaded. Does that sound like something that you would die for if it was a lie? Like, would you let yourself be skinned alive? and beheaded first you were skinned alive and then you were beheaded you weren't beheaded and then skinned alive you were skinned alive and then beheaded so when you think about skinning a potato you know what i mean like you think about it like this person was skinned alive and beheaded and so bartholomew preached the gospel in mesopotamia that's iraq and then persia that's iran turkey Armenia in India and he eventually was skinned alive and beheaded at Derbent Zerbian near Russia on the Caspian on the C Caspian Sea by order of a local king after a majority of the people of Derbent converted to Christianity so they were not happy that Bartholomew was converting these people to Christianity and some of Bartholomew's skin and bones are still kept in the Basilia of St. Bartholomew in Rome. A part of his skull is in Frankfurt, Germany, and an arm is venerated at the Canter Canterbury, Canter 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 I have to learn how to see. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm, I'm learning these words on, on the go. Like, I'm not like 
scripting this video at all. Like I just thought to myself that there's there's got to be a reason why why believing in the Bible is so difficult. Like you know you just don't Canterbury. Canterbury. Okay, Canterbury. So basically his arm was vener venerated at the Canter Canterbury Cathedral in England. So all kinds of his body parts are scattered all across the the world today and like you can look at Bartholomew and you can like research like this disciple but he was skinned alive and then beheaded does that sound like a normal death that, that sounds excruciatingly painful like if you cut yourself like with a knife on accident or if you like get like a bruise or if you like bruise like a bone or if you break a bone on accident or if even if you like somehow get a concussion or you get a toothache and you have to go to the dentist like people think oh man this sucks you know this is kind of painful or like people that go through like really painful stuff painful things excuse me where they have to like go through chemo or or go through like are the soldiers that go fight for war who lose legs and limbs and stuff like that? Or what about the person in the Boston Marathon who got his legs blown off, but he came back and eventually ran the entire marathon with um, aesthetics? I don't even know what they're really called, but he ran the entire marathon afterwards as a handicapped person, but but proved just how 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 proved the human spirit, just the just the actual determination of the human spirit like this man was not going to say i will not finish this boston marathon because i lost my legs he said i'm going to finish this boston marathon because i lost my legs bartholomew was skinned alive and beheaded because he believed in jesus christ because he preached the gospel because he spread christianity I just think to myself, are you serious? Are you serious? Yo, are you serious? That's not normal. Like, nobody just gets skinned alive and beheaded. There was another one, though. It's not even like just one disciple was just killed. With, the, with just Not just one disciple was just, oh, let's just murder Bartholomew. Screw that guy. No. They went and killed James the Lesser, stoned and clubbed to death. So, believed to have preached in Damascus, that's Syria, it acknowledged as the first bishop of the Christians in Jerusalem, that's Israel. Historian, historians say he was sentenced to be stoned to death by the Jews for challenging Jewish laws and, and for convincing some of members of the Jewish community to convert to Christianity. James died when during the stoning one person from the crowd approached him and bashed his head with a Fowler's Club, a piece of wood used for bashing washing clothes. He was buried on the spot where he died, somewhere in Jerusalem. So that will probably need to be researched, but once again, archaeologists have once again, like, found evidence to support the Bible. So it's like every time someone tries to discredit or disprove the Bible, like, I was just reading this. Like, I was starting to get skeptical myself. I was starting to think, like, should I even believe in this crap? And I, I don't want you to think, like, I'm calling Christianity crap. But I was thinking to myself, should I really even believe in God? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to believe in God? And I got to thinking to myself, all these people that believed in God in history, they ended up dying painful deaths. But where are they now? That's the question. Where are they now? If God really is the truth, then where they are right now is somewhere that is way different than where we are right now. They're, they're obviously in heaven. And obviously, like, they took their beliefs to the grave. To the grave. Ladies and gentlemen, they died for this belief. Of Christianity, they didn't just say, you know what? Today, I don't want to believe in God because tomorrow I'm going to get stoned to death. Think about it. Why is it so difficult to believe in God today? 
Because tomorrow you might get stoned to death. You're not just facing the flesh and battling with other people and humans. We're not just battling each other. We're more so battling principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. It's not even, a, it's not even about us. It's about God and it's about the devil. And they have a feud between each other. Imagine when you have a feud with someone and, and you don't get the chance to talk it out. Or, or, or actually, you have a feud with your, your brother. You have a feud with your sister. You have a feud with your cousin. You have a feud with your friend. And you end up becoming enemies because of this feud. That's like God and the devil. They were like, God was obviously God, but Lucifer was an angel. So you have Michael, the archangel, and Lucifer was an archangel. But Lucifer was saying, said to himself, I want to be like God. I want to be like the most high. And God said, you can't be like the most high. Even Michael, the archangel, who's the most fiercest, fiercest of them all, the warrior Michael, the archangel. And then they battled in heaven. They battled in heaven. There was a war in heaven. Lucifer and one third of his uh, of the angels that rebelled against God were thrown down to heaven. But in order to believe this, you have to believe in creation. And that's what I was thinking to myself. Why is believing in the Bible so difficult? Well, first of all, you have evolution. You have consumerism. You have politics. You have classism. Racism. All kinds of isms. That you couldn't even describe all of them. Because there's too many of them. They could just come up with another ism tomorrow. And the problem is, I got to think to myself, historians and archaeologists have confirmed the burial and bodies of these disciples. These weren't made up people, okay? Look it up yourself. You don't have to believe. I don't even, I'm not asking you to believe. You, you should believe if you want to believe. And that's only because God said, if they're, and this is what, I'm like, you could call me an in-between Christian. You could say one minute, you're for it. The next minute, you're against it. Where are you? You're lukewarm. We'll let God be the judge of that. Whether I be lukewarm or I be in-between or I be for it or I be for against it. Just remember, Peter said to God, I won't forsake you. And Jesus said, well, before the, before the, rooster crows or the or or whatever like three times you will deny me three times so i wouldn't even blame myself if if someone came to me and said look i'm gonna kill you if you if if you don't if you don't if you don't deny christ i might deny christ too just like peter did but ultimately they eventually died for christ so i might be in, here and there but in the end i know where i'm going and that's what we have to figure out where we're going. Like we might one minute be, oh, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do. But when it comes down to it, like you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision that you're willing to die for. And that's what they did. They made a decision that they were willing to die for. When an NFL player becomes a quarterback, for example, Russell Wilson, and he puts in the hard work and he becomes the team captain. He doesn't become the team captain because he just made it because he skated his way through. And they were like, let's give him the team captain. Let's give him that badge. No, he became team captain because he believed in something. He put the work in. He was willing to get injured. He was willing to face ridicule. He was willing to face whatever it took to get to that position. He was willing to even lose a Super Bowl and come back or win an, and win a Super Bowl. Because Russell Wilson told himself this. He, he, he said to himself, why not? Because when his father died or his father used to tell Russell Wilson, why not you, Russell? Why not you? Why not you? 
And Russell Wilson said to himself, why not me? And what did he do? He went and won that Super Bowl. So that's the same thing with the disciples. They said, why not you? Why not you? Why not you? We're going to per- we're going to we're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and we're going to die for it because why not you? If 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 God be real and that's what they believe to the grave cuz they didn't just like freaking die of old age, they were freaking killed. Excruciating deaths. They were murdered, they were beheaded, they were destroyed. They were killed. It wasn't like some kind of it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't what you think like they just eventually died of old age so if you ever ever thought that whatever happened to the disciples that believed in Christ this is very interesting to know because literally these guys did not die normal deaths and Andrew I told you James the lesser now Andrew was crucified upside down on an x-shaped cross so Andrew preached in Georgia, that's Russia, in Istanbul, that's Turkey, in Macedonia, and finally Greece. There in Pastros, Greece, the governor, I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'll put the link in the description. So he was mad. He was angry. He was fuming. He was like, this guy, Andrew, is preaching Christianity. But you know what was like? Literally, like it wasn't that they were preaching Christianity, like believe in Jesus, believe in Jesus, because Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You need to believe in Jesus. No, they said you need to believe in Jesus because Jesus died and then rose again on the third day. They didn't say believe in Jesus because he loves you. No, they said believe in Jesus because he died and rose again on the third day. But they said he died and rose again on the third day because he loved you. He didn't just say Jesus loves you, believe in him. No, he died and rose again on the third day because he loved you. Yes, he loved you, but that wasn't the, that wasn't it. He didn't just say, you know what? And that's what makes the Christianity in the Bible so what's that word? Controversial. Controversial. So when you think of Donald Trump and his tweets and people say, you know, Donald Trump is a controversial person. Well, think about Jesus Christ. That was probably a million times worse than whatever Donald Trump could tweet on Twitter. Like, he he would trump Trump on Twitter if Jesus Christ was here today and had, like, a Twitter account. He would easily trump him by, you know, just preaching the gospel. Just saying, you know what, I'm the son of God and this and that. But you have to really think about it. You have to do the research and you have to look back. Was Jesus Christ a really, was he a real historical figure? And archaeologists have come to the conclusion and they have found so many compelling evidence to show that Jesus Christ really did exist. And that the tomb of Jesus is actually empty to this day. But the fact is, the more compelling evidence for believing in Jesus, and this doesn't mean that you can't watch football, you can't, listen to music because we're all sinners in the end like we're all going to battle with this like because if you really choose to believe in christianity and you really look at the bible it's not saying like you know what you're gonna be perfect because even the disciples weren't even perfect now here's an example with noah when god said to noah like you and you have to believe in the bible to understand this but when god said to noah you need to build a freaking ark an ark not a boat an ark a freaking ark, not a not a not a sailboat, not a not a not a yacht, but a freaking ark. And then all the animals came to the ark. And there's historical evidence for this stuff. Like you you can look it up yourself, but th- that ain't even what I'm trying to tell you right now. Like literally, after Noah got off the ark, what the frick did he go and do? Noah went and got wasted. He got drunk. And then one of his sons or something found him naked in his shame. They saw Noah got drunk and then got naked and fell asleep somewhere butt naked. And he was supposedly like a true believer in Jesus or a true believer in God and the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus Christ. But after he got off of 
And there was wickedness and all kinds of sins. And, and Noah was like one of the most up, hell, uh, upstanding people in his day and age. And what did he do when he got off the ark? Eventually he got drunk. It goes to show you that it's not about being perfect. It's about understanding where you come from. Because people say all the time, you don't, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. So it's like when someone tells you, you don't, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. So it's like, so you know where you were born, right? And then you could tell people, yeah, I was born here, but now look at where I am. Imagine if you didn't even know where you were born and people ask you, where were you born? I, I don't know, but I'm here now. So you wouldn't even really know how you got here. You would just be like, I'm here now. I don't know where the frick I was born, but I know I'm here now. So what's up? But no, it's like these people knew where they came from. They were like, we came from creation. We came from God. And this is how we're here. This is why we're here. This is why we're doing what we're doing. Because we believe that we came from creation and this is where we're here. But you have to look it up for yourself. But the real, really, 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 really... Really? Did I say really? I meant really, 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 really. Did I say really? Let me say it one more time. The really most important detail that they forgive to, or they forget to tell you was the disciples. What kind of deaths did they experience? They didn't die of old age. Cause I, when I first started like reading the Bible, like I didn't just start to just believe in the Bible and believe me, like I'm not the perfect Christian. Like I've done some messed up stuff and people have said like messed up things about me. And like I've said messed up things about them too, because sometimes I don't always know how to handle it. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to like buck back or I want to just turn the other cheek or maybe I want war or maybe I want peace. But I'm not perfect. Like, and then the fact is why people get offended because Jesus Christ was really perfect. And he died some he died a death that was supposed to be for all of humanity. So when people preach the gospel, they're preaching something that to some people is offensive and to some people is amazing. Some people are like, this is amazing. Some that that God would come down in the flesh and die for men and women of all kind. And then some people think, who does he think he is? Because they don't believe in creation and they don't believe in God. But these disciples did. So this was the one, Judas Iscariot, and he was the one that portrayed Jesus. You know, with the kiss, betrayed him, gave his whereabouts. And then you know what? When Jesus told the disciples... I need you to pray for me. You know what they ended up doing? They ended up falling asleep. That just goes to show you they weren't perfect. We ain't perfect. We're not, we're not trying to be perfect. When you try to be perfect, then you realize just how imperfect you are. You, you trying to be perfect is only going to make you realize your flaws even more. If you're more of like, I know I'm not perfect, but I know that I have good qualities and I have things that are my strengths and I have things that are my weaknesses. You become humble, but when you feel like I don't have any weaknesses, all I got is strengths. You become prideful. And then if you ever do fall, you'll, you'll, you'll start to question, I thought I had no weaknesses. Because I thought I was perfect. But then you realize you aren't. But the fact of the matter is, even Judas Iscariot, after he sold out Jesus' whereabouts, he didn't just go spend the money. Like, you know what? I'm going to go spend this money and just blow it on all the nice things I've ever wanted in life. I've always wanted to go buy that nice house. I've always wanted to go get that that nice horse or that nice property back in his time. But instead, he committed suicide by hanging himself. And then he obviously threw the money back to... He threw the money back to the, to the, to the people who, who he, who he, who he sold Jesus' whereabouts to. And, and, it, and it's just like, the, the fact of the matter is, is that all these people that ever believed in Jesus, like the only one that turned against Jesus before he rose again, before he died and rose again, was, Judy, was Judas. Judy, Judas Iscariot. Judas. Judas. That was him. But Peter, this man, 
was crucified upside down. And there's some, some of these disciples, they found archaeology, archaeology, archaeological evidence. And this was like around the time of like the emperor of Rome and, and Nero and stuff like that. And like Peter was crucified upside down. I mean, that, that doesn't sound like a normal death. Like you don't just get crucified upside down for something for like a crime or, or something. Cause I, they usually crucified them up standing upright, you know, but to crucify them standing upside down was like probably one of the most painful things. Cause when someone gets crucified, like you can look it up. The Romans really crucified people. Like this isn't no joke. This is historical. The Romans really crucified people. And when you get crucified, they, they hammer your arms out to a T. And then they put your legs together and they hammer the nail through your feet. But your feet are on top of one another. And then they, and then sometimes they might give you a wooden plank for your butt to sit on. But if they don't give you that, then your arms start to dislocate. And your shoulders. You can just hear them just until they break and your arms start to dislocate. And then your rib cage starts to <clears throat> cave into your lungs. And then you stop breathing and you start to suffocate till you eventually die. But no, he wasn't crucified standing upside, standing upright. He was crucified upside down. Imagine that. That's, that, that doesn't sound normal at all. And John, I believe John, I could have, I could have swore that John was beheaded. Gotta make sure that. So, I mean, this one you need to look into because I don't know. About them saying, because some of the, because I, I could swear somebody said that John was, let me see. John was banished. I mean, some, some say that John on the island of Patmos, like he was banished there for his testimony of Jesus. And like, I want to go with the banishment one. Like he was exiled to Patmos because that is like one of the most you know okay okay yeah that that's what it says here that he was banished so like um he was out they say that he was thrown into burning oil but survived but the fact is like it's not about that but he was banished like for his belief in jesus christ like they didn't just let him just live around the city or come around to the grocery store at the time and, and wave hi. No, they banished him to like an island where he spent the rest of his days until he died a very old man. And he was the only apostle to do so. So, so the only apostle to actually survive was John. But, I mean, he didn't survive a lavish life. Like, you know what? He didn't survive like a... a a peaceful lavish life where he was living it up living large no i mean he was living in exile so if you ever seen the movie castaway with tom hanks and you remember like how he like was cast away onto an island like any any and he literally like was struggling to like find food and learn how to like make a fire and like you know it's just like you you realize just the the uncertainty of, of being cast away. So like being banished onto an island isn't like, like, yeah, sure, it beats death, right? Like these other apostles, they died excruciating deaths. But like, in the end of the day, like, he wasn't living it up large, you know? So it just goes to show you that I want to, I'm trying to find the one where, so James the Great was beheaded. So there there's there's evidence. I 
there's evidence actually for the deaths of there's evidence you know that the the actual disciples died for their belief in Jesus Christ not because they died because they believed he was God but they died because they believed that he rose again and i had and i had the um i had the the link up but i'll i'll find it again I'll find it again and I'll post it in the description. I won't post a video until I find it because it's there. In the in in the dead ski the dead ski uh ski sea <laughs> dead sea skull skulls scrolls scrolls. Sometimes my English isn't very good, even though like I was born in America, it's amazing. But the Dead Sea Scrolls, that was another, that was another find, archaeologist find, and they have it actually up in a museum. But it's not even about that. It's like the fact that when people like think to themselves like about like the the Bible and stuff, they're like, oh, these people wrote it in one in one sitting. But the but the really the fact of the matter is like it was wrote it was written from a whole different. A whole bunch of different people in different timelines like it wasn't just written by one person so that's what makes it even more um controversial but literally though these disciples died excruciating deaths they they died the most painful deaths you could think of like they didn't just they didn't just you know roll over from old age like they literally were murdered for their faith you have to look it up too because I had the link and I'm obviously gonna find it I am going to find it because I know it's here and it's not like I'm not looking for Bible evidence I'm looking for factual evidence real world evidence because it's true I mean there's more to it than you think so you got to look into it and that's just the thing about about the about the Bible though that makes it so controversial is that there is evidence and that and that's really why people get offended is because they don't really want to believe that they don't want to believe in that someone that they don't want to believe that someone would die for something like this because God is real. They want to believe that if they were real that they died because they're they're crazy or something, you know. But they don't want to believe that they died because they believed in God. They believe Jesus Christ was God. <clears throat> Here it is. I found it. I'm going to post this in the link. I'm going to post this in the link of the description. As soon as I said that, the Jaguars got a fumble too. Ain't that ironic. And now the Seahawks. Let's see if they got the ball. Do they got it? Who knows? It's up in the air. But I found the link, and I'm going to post this link in the description. Like it just goes to show you that this, there's more to this than you even think. Like This is not, this is not just made up. Ha, the Seahawks got the ball. As soon as I said that, ha, ha, I told you guys, this is real. This is some real stuff. This is really real. It's not even a joke. So I got the link. I'm going to post this link in the description. And I've kind of told you guys a little bit about, like, why it's so hard to believe in God. And I know at the end of the video, I kind of, like, got all sidetracked and started 
looking stuff up on the computer and stuff, but I'm just trying to find this link because I want you guys to know that if you do choose to believe in Jesus Christ, just know that you're not putting your faith in Jesus Christ for no reason. Like, it's really, he really is God, and that's very offensive, and, and you're either going to be pissed off. You're going to either be very pissed off right now, or you're going to, like, be humble and say, you know what, I'm going to do some research and see if Jesus Christ is really God. So you're either going to be hella mad or you're going to like want, want to know, like, why is this person saying that Jesus Christ is God? And if you're someone that's like, likes to under, likes to like look into stuff before you make a decision, then you probably won't be mad as hell. But if you're someone that just gets offended when people talk about like religion and stuff, you'll probably be mad that I'm saying that Jesus Christ is God. But I've come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is God and that the reason why believing in God is so hard is because even back then, the disciples were getting murdered and killed. They weren't just dying of old age. So I think I've come to the conclusion that believing in God is very difficult. And excuse me when I say this, but believing in God is hard as hell. And I, uh, I pray that if you choose to believe in Jesus Christ, that you find the strength and the courage to, to keep your faith in Jesus Christ because Lord knows it's not easy and it's very difficult, you know what I mean? Sometimes I even wonder, why do I even believe in Jesus? But, I mean, it's difficult. It's really difficult. So, uh, anyways, I pray that you guys find find peace and that you find meaning in life. If you stumble across this or if you are trying to figure out, like, I don't really know what I'm going to name this video. Like, I just do this on the fly, and I don't script nothing. But, like, I think really this is going to be about why believing in God is so difficult. Something like that. Or let me be more specific. Why being a Christian is so hard. How about that? That's what I'll 